Hello there friends, now this video here is going to be very different than other videos we've done in the past but I believe it's going to be incredible because some of you may know but I study billionaires, right? People who are worth over thousand million is what one billion is. But most of the billionaires that I study are either in the technology industry or in the finance industry. And the reason for this is because most billionaires that were produced in the past 20 to 30 years are either in the technology or in the finance industry. Not all billionaires, but the most. And also because I personally am in the technology industry. But here's the thing. Up until a few weeks ago, I've never heard of human fertility, to be honest, never. I was sitting on my desk and I was going over other people's YouTube channels because I wanted to see what they're doing. And I noticed him being interviewed. Human Fertitta. And I learned he's worth $5 billion. He said, that's pretty good. But when I heard the industry he's made all his money in, when I heard the industry he's in, my jaw dropped. I was absolutely astonished. This guy won me at once, all right? The industry he's in is the restaurant business. Now think about this for a second. This is insane. And yes, they're in gaming and amusements, but in the restaurant business, this guy is basically the richest restaurateur. It's infinitely harder to make it depending on your industry. The restaurant business, everyone knows, is not an, uh, an industry to become a billionaire in. And I was like, this is insane. I'm going to study everything that this guy says. I'm going to learn everything that comes out of this guy's mouth because he is a genius. He is a genius. He must be an amazing operator. He must be amazing at everything he does and uh, Tuman Fertitta did not disappoint. I watched absolutely everything that uh, he has put out there, you know, the book, the interviews, and I've come out with 10 of the best rules that he has, and I wanna share it with you guys. It's going to be really valuable. We're going to play some footage, and then after every single tip, I'm going to analyze it and speak about how maybe you can apply it in your situation, uh, no matter whether you make millions or you're just at the beginning, because Again, I've listened and I've watched everything from him. I've read the book, so I think I have a little bit more context and I think it's going to help out if I go over and analyze. What he has done is incredible. So let's dive right into it and let's go over rule number one. Let's play the footage. I go after the masses and not the classes. Yeah. And, and uh, so I really that, had you mean you, about, go, you like mass I, I appeal like, I want the masses. I'm going after the masses, okay? Because if, this is a telling that I tell my people all the time. And I don't even know that it's in this book now that I think about it. That's good. It. We got it's exclusive that, we content got on the show. And honestly, That's every it, honestly, all the interviews I've done in the last couple of weeks, I haven't used one of the most famous Tillmanisms of them all. And that's you make it with the masses and you spend it with the classes. Okay. Okay. But even <laughs> Mastro's and Catch is as even though that they are expensive restaurants and they're a lot of fun and they're a great entertainment value, they're still for the masses. Yes. We do hundreds of covers a night in those restaurants. Genius, genius. You make it with the masses and you spend it with the classes. And there's another one a friend of mine told me recently, serve the classes and you live with the masses, but serve the masses and you live with the classes. Now, who are you serving? Do you work for a large corporation or are you serving the masses? So the first step obviously is to stop working for corporations, work for ourselves. But then when you start a business, are you serving the masses? Because this is how you become truly rich. This is how you build a lot of wealth. I see a lot of entrepreneurs, they start out, obviously, if you open just a local restaurant, just one restaurant, serving the local community ain't going to make you a lot of money. You're serving the local community. Think about this. If you're a personal trainer, you speak with friends, family, you advertise on the internet, maybe you're not serving the masses. You have to think nationally. You have to think globally. You have to worry how you're going to reach all these people. Physical business, you have to think about scale, how you're going to multiply it. Internet business, you have to think about reach. Thankfully, with the internet, we can truly serve the masses, no matter what you're doing on the internet, we can serve the masses, but how are you going to serve the masses so that you can live with the classes? Find a niche, find a specific niche of people with a specific problem, make sure though that they're large in number and that you can reach all these people because this is Silicon Valley 101, the size of the market. You gotta focus on specific problem. It got to be a lot of people that you're helping out to make a lot of money. Serve the masses, you live with the classes. Next rule, 
one of the reasons that we're successful is we know our numbers and mm -hmm. and we know that the linen cost should be three tenths or this cost should be four tenths and and if you're not running those costs then you have a people problem and and I've never not acquired anybody that I wasn't able to go in and fix their numbers by three or four yeah. percent by just running your business better and I think that's something that we do extremely well is analyze everything and you'd be shocked at the restaurant companies that don't have analysts that, that yeah. and, and we do we weekly inventories numbers. we always want to know where we are you mm, this is huge this is why you have to know your numbers this is why we all have to know our numbers every week because when we have problems you can't fix them one month from now two months from now if you want to grow fast you have to find the problems early you have to find them the same week so the way i like to think about numbers and the more i learn from tuman like the better i become at this uh single strategy is first what is the process of knowing your numbers how do you know your numbers well what i like to do in our company is every sunday we basically have a lot of whiteboards but they sell online you have whiteboards is dry erase whiteboard type of uh, foil to where you just stick on the wall. It's not the hardwood uh, whiteboard. So you can buy this very, very inexpensively on Amazon. So we stick a lot of these on the wall and then we write all the numbers. And so every Sunday we go over the numbers and we want to see where is the problem. All right. This is the first thing, the process. You need the process every Sunday, for example, to look at your numbers in your business. So buy the whiteboard put it on the wall, track your numbers weekly. Now, the second thing I like to think about is what numbers do we want to track? And something I learned from the Silicon Valley playbook is that you don't want to track a lot of numbers because at the beginning, especially if you track a lot of numbers, you're going to get confused. You only want to have like, a, a, you know, maybe three metrics, three KPIs, uh, three numbers per category, but let's and make these be the important ones, right? And what are the categories? Uh, of course, the first one is marketing and sales. What are the numbers? Now, I think important numbers for you, no matter what the business would be, uh, you know, you need to track how many people see your offer every single week. You're not going to make sales unless people actually see the offer, hear the sales message. So how many people saw your offer last week, no matter uh, physically online. Now, the second thing is, well, how many became sales? And here you have the ratio. Well, how is the, uh, so what percent, you know, of these that saw the offer bought? And then of course you want to track how much money does it cost you to acquire a user? You want to know how much money does it cost? Uh, or if it's free marketing, you also want to know the effort that it's needed to be put to get these sales. That's marketing. Now, the second category that I usually like to track numbers in, it's really important, obviously, uh, Tillman uh, repeats this a lot, is product, right? Product. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, especially on the internet, you guys, and you don't care about product. Now, this is insane, and mostly because you sell someone else's product, you source it from China, whatever the case is. But here's the thing though, now, if people don't like the product, if people don't use the product, if people don't recommend the product, you're wasting your time marketing it. Because if you have a much better product with much less marketing effort, you're going to have a lot more success. That's why in Silicon Valley, all tech companies first work on product. They want to have what's called product market fit. Only then they scale the marketing. So how do you track this? Now, you can track what is the retention, right? One month from now, are people still using the product that you sold them? A lot of people sell online courses. Now there's a problem in a month. No one watches the online course. Now, do, do you retain people with your product? How about the net promoter score? Do they recommend it to their friends? You want to constantly improve product because the better the product is, the, the, the easier the marketing becomes. So, tr so track at least these two product metrics every single week. And then of course you have finance, which I don't want to bore you to death. You can search for some metrics. And then you have people, of course, at the beginning, when you're starting out, you don't have a lot of people working for you to track different people metrics. But I'm only going to say this now, when Google started and when Amazon started, when they were looking for people to hire, the first people that they wanted to hire, they spent a lot of time looking for them and hiring them. They didn't just hire the first person that they saw. This is a mistake because if you just spend more time, you're going to find a much more qualified person that is going to help you really take this to the moon. So I'd say at the beginning, when it comes to people, track how much time you're spending before you hire a person. Don't make the mistake of hiring quickly. You have to hire very slowly, but uh, th that's about it. Now, 
track your numbers every single week on Sunday. Do what Tillman Fertitta does. Track them on Sunday. And the other thing he mentioned, I don't know if you missed this, he said other companies don't have analysts to look at our numbers. What we have to do as entrepreneurs, sometimes it's not enough for you and me to look at the numbers. We have to go to someone else with more experience and say, hey, listen, you've been in the mobile app business for many years. You've been in the online course business for many years. You've been in e-commerce for many years. Now look at my numbers. Tell me what you think. What am I doing wrong? They're going to give you invaluable advice. So know your numbers, track your numbers, and seek advice in regards to your numbers. Tip number three. Now, before we continue with tip number three, I'd like to invite you to like this video. It really helps out with the Google algorithm. I decide what videos to shoot next based on uh, what you guys like and whether to even shoot videos. So if you want me to continue uh, doing these videos, subscribe to the channel, like the video, let's build this community. I wanna do this in a friendly way and not just I'm teaching you stuff kind of way. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Now I, I'd invite you to like the video, subscribe, and maybe even let me know a comment. What do you think so far? Let's continue with the next rule, number three. You're the ones always that everybody else is worried about. And we're the ones who can always deliver. Wow. And, and we're the ones who have the funding, the due diligence to do it quickly. We outwork people. We, you know, uh, a, a lawyer of mine who handles all the M&A, he was at the office from 9 a.m. Sunday a week ago till Monday night at 9 p.m., 36 straight wow. hours getting a deal done. Okay, it's just, it's just a culture of we are the best. <laughs> and a culture of we are the freaking best. Now, this is crazy. I'll be completely honest with you. Our generation, I think we have a problem and we've become too soft. We don't speak about winning anymore. We don't speak about becoming the best anymore. Always is about we're going to offend someone. And of course, there's some things that are absolutely wrong and disgusting to say. But I mean, what's wrong about you becoming the best? Why do we have to keep giving praise to our children, to anyone else about being number 10, being number eight? No, we wanna be number one. We have to be number one, that's it. This is how you win in life. So, you know, how? what are you going to become the best in? What are you going to become the best? You have to think about this because here he expands on that idea. And then when I was in my 20s, you know, I said, when that Forbes 400 came out, I said, I wanna be on that list one day. Yeah. So you got to set yourself goals and try to set yourself apart. Yeah. And I talk about that in the book, is that anybody can set themselves apart. You can be the best sound guy. You can be the best cameraman. You can do certain things and study your field, and then you get a break because you were such a good cameraman, or you're the best sound guy that you got recommended to go on this set and then this set. And then all of a sudden in Hollywood, you're known as the best sound guy. Yeah. You can do things to separate yourself from everybody else by just working a little harder. Hmm. So choose something to become the best in and become the best in that specific thing. Be the bull in your industry that everyone else looks at is, and they're like, this person is the best. Now, let's do something. Now, let's build this community together. How about, isn't this going to be amazing if you go down in the comment section and you type in what do you want to be the best and you say, Peter, I'm going to be the best in this. So you claim your ground, you claim your territory, but better yet, when we see different people, what they claim to be the best in, it's our community because you're going to subscribe to the channel. It's us together. I want to learn about you. I want to know more about you. I want to know more about people who watch the videos, who found this video. Let's build this community together. Maybe i be the best. Our company, our mission is to build the, the, the most innovative and important product when it comes to technology serving people globally. Maybe you want to become the best at something different. Another person is going to become the best at something different. Together, we can be so strong. We can be so uh, unbeatable that we can do crazy things. So let me know in the comments, what do you want to be the best in and know that you are a part of this community to where we're going to be helping each other. I'm going to be helping you out uh, for sure. You can ask me any questions. I'll be doing videos, answering questions, whatever the case is. So let me know in the comments, what do you claim you're going to be the best in, in the comments. And we continue with the next rule. Don't believe the performer you always give to a bank. It's always okay to give the bank what you think could really happen, but you always go to a worst case scenario of what's gonna happen because there's an 80% chance that's going to be reality. And, and I've always lived by that. 
and people start drinking their own Kool-Aid and believing their own BS, sometimes just because they had one good deal and they're not as smart as they think they are. Mm. See, in anything that you do that's new in your life, and uh, Fertitta speaks about this in another video, you have a best case scenario that can happen and you have a worst case scenario. So you're starting a new business, you have the best case and the worst case. Now, when you go to the bank and you say, hey, listen, I'm starting this new business, give me a little bit of money. Of course, you're, they're going to ask you how much money are you going to make, can you pay back? Of course, you're going to tell them, I'm going to make a lot of cash, here's my projections, right? This is the best case. However, the problem is then you believing you're really going to make this much money because what he says now your worst case scenario has 80% chance it's going to be a reality. I remember many years ago, we were about to launch a new product. I was so confident in the marketing. We actually hired a customer support person to handle all the sales. Now, imagine how ridiculous this is. Of course, we had no sales. We only had one. Maybe God just wanted to give me a little bit of hope. And this is what we all do. Most likely with anything you do, you're going to struggle. It always takes longer than you think. Nothing ever works the first time you try it. I've studied Thomas Edison's career, all his inventions took forever. I think there was only one that he got it from the first try, which sometimes we get these breaks one in 20, right? Everything else takes excruciatingly long, so you might as well prepare for it. Next rule. One of the things we preach at, at my company is change, change, change. And if you don't change and mix things up, you're going to get run over because it's changing very quickly. Uh, just like in anything today, in technology, medicine, or whatever, you better move quick and you better make change. Chart House, okay, was one of the first ones of a brand that had been around. Some of the greatest locations in America, they're on the waterfront, okay? What the, the last ownership didn't do was change, change, change. Our parents used to go eat at a restaurant if it had four walls and decent food. Today we want entertainment when we go out. So one of the first things I did was totally change the look, change the logo, change everything. I've changed the logo three times in 17 years at Chart House just to keep things changing and be different. I've changed the interior of the restaurants three times. You go to a Martin Steakhouse, greatest food in the world, but they never changed their look. People, they never expanded their menu. I changed the look, expanded the menu. Got I, I gotta tell you, this is probably my favorite one because I think this is the number one reason why Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world. I mean, what Amazon is doing, they're experimenting like no one else. It's just experiment after experiment after experiment. You're always changing, trying new things because the mindset behind it is really important. Now, most experiments are going to fail. Nine out of 10 experiments are going to fail. That's why it's experiment. If you know that something is going to be successful, it's not an experiment by Jeff Bezos' uh, definition. However, if one experiment that you do is successful, boy, do you hit the home run. Now your life changes completely. Seriously, one idea can make you a millionaire. One idea, one experiment can make you a billionaire. Think about the Instagram story for crying out loud. Now, Kevin Sistrom was building this app similar to Yelp, local reviews of restaurants and whatnot. But then they had this little feature to where you can upload photos that uh, it was somewhere inside deep in the app. And then uh, one day, Kevin Sistrom on vacation, I his girlfriend at the time in Southern California or Baja, Mexico, something like that. And she comes to him and she goes, uh, listen, I, I see this other woman, you know, she has these amazing photos, but I just can't do them. And he goes, hey, that's very easy to do. You just add a little filter here and there and your photo looks amazing. And then he's like, and he goes, well, actually, you know what? How about this app that we have, Bourbon? It wasn't even Instagram at the time. The feature that we see people use uploading of photos, how about we make this feature the main feature? And how about we put filters so when people upload photos, they have the filters like my girlfriend wants. And they did this and this little experiment turned out to be Instagram now worth maybe hundred billion dollars. Insane. One experiment can make you a millionaire. One experiment can make you a billionaire. Never give up. Even if you think about it, this video right now is an experiment. Now, how many other people have you seen speaking about business, doing this kind of, you know, reaction stuff? I'm experimenting because I know that when you experiment, you might hit on one idea, but because it's an experiment and no one else is doing it, when you hit it, it blows up big time. Do you experiment every single week?
when you know your numbers and when you track your numbers on Sunday, experiment, try something new every weekend on Sunday. Ask yourself, how many experiments did I do this week? Do it. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> okay, next rule. And, you know, I'm not one of those people that say, oh, let your kids go work for somebody else for a while or go stick them in this department or this department. My company is so big that, that it would be a waste of time. What I'm trying to do is teach them to make decisions, okay? Because if you can learn to make decisions, you're going to always be successful. They don't need to learn every little aspect of every division or every company or business we own because there's too many. Learn how to make decisions. This is invaluable. This is invaluable. Decision making, yet another billionaire tells you, is the most important skill is in business. You're going to have to make over 100,000 business decisions in your career. You can find yourself a lawyer. You can find yourself a programmer. You can find yourself a marketer. Some of these skills help if you have them, but if you can't make decisions on a daily basis, boy, are you in for a disaster. I plan on doing another video, by the way, in the next few weeks about decision making. I got to the point of only having three tips for good decision making. I got this straight from Google uh, and it's the best framework that I've learned, that I've got and I want to share it with you in the next few weeks. So I'm excited if you're subscribed. When times are really bad, we forget they're ever going to be good again. And when times are really good, we forget they're going to be bad again. And we need to always remember that so the paddle doesn't get you. Yeah, tell people your, your concept of the paddle. Well, there's a paddle for everybody's ass, we all know <laughs> that, and uh, every day you just get up and I don't fear anything, but I worry about everything. And the day you stop worrying in good times, the paddle will get you behind. And, and, and so, as great as things are in life, I'm, I know you're only a, a few steps or a few incidents away from something bad happening. You can never forget it. Mm, do you believe this? Because I personally have seen in my life that, you know, the moment you lose your focus, bad things start happening. And there's a famous story of how Bill Gates' father had a gathering of Bill Gates, Warren Buffett and 18 other people. And he had them write down the word, one single word that's most responsible for their success. And both Bill Gates and Warren Buffett wrote down the word focus. So they credit their success to, uh, to the largest possible extent, to the word focus and then being focused. And here's what Fertitta is saying, the greatest ever restaurateur, one of the greatest billionaires, even. He's, I love the guy, and he's saying the same thing. You gotta be focused all the time because the moment you stop is that paddle from behind. And I know that when I bought my first jet, I learned how to fly it, but now I prefer sitting in the back seat in that G5 and let somebody else taking care of my ass. And that's all you're doing. So You learned how to fly your own jet? Absolutely. Why, why absolutely? Because I like to know a little bit about everything I do. Such a small hint. Now, if you listen to this, you would probably have missed it unless you really analyze and unless you really pay attention. Because if you're like me and if you study a large number of billionaires, you would see that they all have this. And what they have is that when they do something, they want to know a little bit about every single element that's related to it. Now, let me give you an example. We're building a mobile app, right? I'm not a software developer. However, I have to understand software development. I might not know how to write the code, I might not know writing all the different programming languages, but I sure as hell understand how to manage the code. Where is the code going? How does it merge with other developers' code? How do I protect the code? How, uh, so many things related to it, because if I don't know how to manage this process, how do I ensure that we get charged the right price, that we're paying the right money? How do I ensure that we have the right quality, that someone doesn't go out and run with the code and then we have no company, right? You can't know this. You have to know. I want to know about the different design concepts. I'm not a designer per se, but I have to understand why is this thing this way? Why is this thing what people like? You have to understand anything that you do, you have to understand the other side because otherwise uh, people are going to scam you. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of issues and you're not going to have great results. Even with YouTube, I went out there and you know, I'm not ashamed to say I'm actually proud and I went there and I wanted to see first and foremost, what does PewDiePie has to say? Yeah, PewDiePie. I wanted to see what PewDiePie has to say about building a YouTube channel. What are his tips? Why would I not listen to him? 
what do I care that he's in gaming and you know he speaks to children I don't care the guy has hundred million subscribers so I want to know and in fact what he taught me is invaluable I think probably the best stuff I've learned uh, about YouTube from PewDiePie and not some other videos so really anything that you do I want to know everything that's related I want to dive deep and this is what uh, Fertitta is preaching you have to understand your stuff you know I've helped entrepreneurs for many years how to sell their products and services online how to do internet marketing and I can tell you I've seen this with my own eyes for example let's say you're selling uh, tea or you're selling supplements but you want to know a little bit about everything that you do so you go out there and you say now these supplements that I'm buying and then I'm selling to people how are they produced how much does it cost to produce most people don't care they just say oh I just want to buy the, the supplements in bulk and then I'm going to sell them at a retail price and make a lot of money but how much does it cost to produce these supplements in the first place and they say oh my god this is really the cost of producing supplements how about I make my own supplements and then they go out and they start making a ton of cash just because they wanted to learn a little bit about well the supplements that I'm getting how much does it cost to produce? I'm just curious. I want to learn about it. Then you learn it's very easy. You learn you actually have a factory that can produce them for you for even less money. And then you go out there, you still sell them to the customers, but now you get them produced on your own and you're making a ton of cash. So having this skill, learning a little bit about everything that you do related to your stuff is invaluable. You have to start doing it. Do it. Don't ever outlive you trying to be able to grow your business. I've always put so much back into my business and that's why I was able to grow it. Where I watch a lot of people start making a few dollars and their lifestyle outlives their business and outgrows their business and then they hit a bump and then why are you, like I never had to sell an airplane in tough times, I never had to sell a house, I never, or my lifestyle, you know, you know, I never had to sell anything in tough times because I never outlived where I should be living at the time. Mm. Such a simple and great piece of advice. And yet, if we think about it, it's difficult to apply because nowadays with Instagram and social media, we all kind of feel the pressure to live that life. And we always want to get that better whip, better car. We're always going to get the watch. and We're always going to get this and that or spend more money in business, expand quickly. What I found works really well and I actually got this from this book is you know, paying myself a salary that is actually really low. Because in the early days, what a lot of entrepreneurs do is they will have one debit account and they use this debit account to spend on whatever they want. So they kind of mix the personal finances and the business. And this is where you have problems because you can't really tell what is going on, how healthy the business is and what is happening. So what you have to do is you have to pay yourself salary like you're an employee because then you know the real health of your business and then you know how much money you have to spend. So I'm paying myself a really low salary with the tech corporation and in the other businesses are LLCs. So that's an advice I've received from a lot of uh, accountants and I, I think you would want to do the same. You don't want to mix the personal and the business. So you want to have some type of entity, uh, most likely an LLC would that be. And then with that LLC, even if you don't officially pay yourself a, a paycheck, because I'm not sure with an LLC if you have to, uh, like with corporations, it's a must to pay yourself a salary. Still get the money every single month. Uh, think of it like salary. It's going to be much easier not to get into trouble. And the last one, rule number 10. But in the rainforest case, what I decided to do was I'm going to look out three to five years and of these 30 rainforest, uh, if I can't make it on just these big five, there's three at Disney, there's one in um, the Mall of America, and I think there's one in Chicago. And I said, these are the five that are doing the most money. And if they're not going to be around, then I shouldn't do this deal. See, the reason why I chose this rule of long-term thinking as the one to finish with is because analyzing all these multi-billionaires, one thing I saw and I keep seeing again and again and again is that the longer horizon you have, the more successful you are. Because if you think about it, most people, you know, that are broke, they're just living day by day. Then you have some people that are doing okay, right? The middle class, they live month by month most of the time and if they're upper middle class they probably think year by year then you have successful business people thinking three four years from now but the multi-billionaires 
dating 10 years from now. Yes, what you chose right now, the business that you chose right now might be a good business, but is this the future? Right? You have to ask yourself this. Is this the future? Because the future is going to come. And as Jeff Bezos says, you never, ever want to bet against the future because the future is going to beat you every single time. If you like this video, my friend, my name is Peter Antonov yet again. I hope you left me a comment already during the video. If you haven't, I would really appreciate if you like this video. And most importantly, let me know in the comments what you think about this. This is the first time I do this video format, change, change, change. So I would appreciate your feedback. Do you want me to do more videos like this? Do you want me to do another video on Tumor Pretida? Because I have more advanced strategies from him I was wondering whether to do another video about it because I can't fit it all into this one let me know in the comments like this video subscribe I'll be coming out with more and I hope to get to know you in the comment section Peter Antonov here signing out peace